Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the Lenovo Legion Glasses full review, and I have decided to bring in the Xreal Airs to make it a comparison video as well. I'm going to say that these did not impress me in the beginning, and I was instantly leaning towards the Xreals. After experimenting with these and using them for a week in real world scenarios, I have to say they've grown on me enough that I think it's worth listening to a comparison and you can decide for yourself on the details and see what you like and what you don't like and help you make a more informed decision before you pick one of these up. So let's check it out. Because these are a direct accessory with Legion Go, I thought, you know what, I need to test these out and tell other people about them. Beyond that, I've also had the Unreal Air since inception in the US. I almost ordered them in Japan on eBay, but either way, I've had these for a long time, so I know a decent amount about the AR sort of, these aren't true AR, but projection screen glasses on your face. Okay, I don't know what category they're in. These still say Unreal. The company has now changed to Xreal for legal reasons, I'm assuming, because Enreal sounds like Unreal, that just sounds cooler, Xreal sounds something else, but either way, they function the same. I still have the Enreal case. It's not as strong or nice. The Legion glasses box is thicker, nicer, and more structured, and there's an unboxing video that I posted prior to this. The manuals, the cloth, which is not as cool as the Lenovo cloth, but also a large, medium, and small nose piece. I initially said that the nose pieces on the Legion glasses look like the best I've seen. Realistically, they're almost identical to the and X reels. If I say N reel, forgive me, I'm so used to saying that. So the whole video, if I say N reel, I mean X reel. They're one and the same. So pretty much they both come with the same exact things. Just wanted to throw that out there. The case for the N reel, X reel, it's nicer. It's got this leather sort of feel. It's slightly harder when I compress these with about equal volume. This is definitely harder. It will compress less under stress and it just looks nicer. It's nice that it says Lenovo. I like that. And it's not bad. And it's nice that they included it, which they should. But compared to the Legion Go case, which was amazing, they should have bumped up the quality of this a bit. So the other thing in the case is that this part right here I feel will scratch the lenses at some point, especially if you put the cable here. And the inside is soft. It looks hard, but it's it's got this slight texture to it that's softer. So if you put these face up, the cable may start to scratch on the front. The Enreal Xreal has a flip up part and a cable underneath. And it's a suede sort of interior. It's definitely nicer. It takes up a smaller footprint in your bag too. So that's always a nice thing. Not too bad. It's like a Beats pill. <laughs> I'm not going to list all the specifications. I'll put them up, but I'm not going to talk about all of them. What I will do is cover the things that I think make a difference, and I'm going to go at this more qualitatively instead of giving you numbers. One thing I will say is that Legion Glasses did not display a lot of technical specifications on their website, even under the more advanced section. It was very minimal. The X-Reels lay it all out. So if you're heavily driven on specs and you want to see all of them, go check out the X-Reels. Both build qualities are really good. The Legion glasses weigh 96 grams, and the Xreal ones weigh 79 grams, with I think the following ones weighing even less. I'm not sure if they measure that because this has a cable connected. I would assume that they differentiate that, but either way, if I let the cable rest on the, the floor here, there is a heavier difference with the Legion glasses. I can feel it. And the build quality of both is great. So I said that right off the bat with the first impressions. These feel solid and nice. And the front is plastic, I believe. That's another hard thing to find. It should be plastic for the weight reduction, but it almost feels like magnesium in the front, how magnesium is metal and super light, strong, but also is cool to the touch a little bit. So I'm, I'm not sure, but if it were magnesium or metal, I'm sure they would list that because that's an advantage. So it's most likely plastic. The hinges both do this hyperextension thing. The hinges on this are really stiff though, and they go to about this far, and you need to do that to get these on. Now, at first, I thought these were really small and tight to get on, and, and if you look at them compared, they're pretty similar, actually. I said these are for narrow heads, and they may well be, but one thing is that this back part around the back of the ear is a little more flexible than these. These also flex, but this whole thing feels like plastic where you can tell the back piece here is rubber. So once these 
give a little bit and get worn in a little bit like a baseball glove, then that shouldn't be an issue. But when I put these on, there still is pressure right here on the side of my head. I get that on these though as well. The way I alleviate that is by, over time, I tilt it upwards like this, kind of like a granny reading a book <laughs> with their bifocals. But it, it works because after a couple of hours, it will start to fatigue you right there. And everyone's head is different, but I, I don't I don't get the pressure from this, I get the pressure from this. So that's that's another thing I'll mention. This gives far less pressure squishing into the sides of my head, which is a big deal for me. But the arms, if you look here on the Legion glasses are significantly longer. So the longer arms are a benefit. They go over your ears further. But the problem is that the arms are still too tight here and squish in. If you look, I can extend this out. So assuming this loosens over time, it has not in the week or so I've used these. It has not loosened, but that's a very minimal amount of use. So over time, this may loosen to give you less pressure on the sides, but I do have pressure right here above the ears, which I'm not a huge fan of. So both will flex out, but this flex out of the back of the arm behind the ear is much softer than the flex out of the hinges here. So pressure hits me here, and then pressure hits me here. The N reels or X reels, they do extend, but they are not smooth, and you almost feel like you're breaking them when you do this, but they do have play. So when you put them on, they do have play. And these, these just feel so much less bulky and lighter when I put them on, but I don't have the cable connected right now. For now, just note that the arms and the fitment are, are decent. One last thing I will mention is that these arms are stationary right here at this angle, and they, they can't be moved. But the x reels, their arms can be adjusted. So you can click up, middle, and down. They have three adjustment angles. So furthest down, you probably can't see on camera. It goes like that, and then furthest up will be like that. And I tend to leave it in the middle, but this is cool for people who have just slightly off fitment. And for instance, if it's too much on your nose and you would tilt them both up, and it would kind of bend the front plate out more. And if it's not close enough on your nose and you tilt them all the way down, and it kind of brings them in like the real wayfarers that angle in. So it's a nice feature to have. The width and the depth and all that is pretty similar on these. And the biggest difference is going to be that arm. So realistically, they're pretty similar. The one benefit the Legion Glasses has is the longer arm. And the one benefit these have are the adjustable arms that sort of fit better without pressure here. But everyone's going to have a different shaped head. So the pressure may not fit there. These are definitely for smaller heads too, but in a <laughs> sort of flat so sort of a flat dimension here instead of a flat dimension here. It's kind of funny how they're built because if you can see these, the hook just reaches around, but you can see that the ear could go all the way up here. So here, well, it's about the same, but this hook kind of expands out further. The two extra accessories that come in the bag here, they are non-slip rubber extensions for the back arms. These seem to be built for smaller heads, so people may appreciate these. You can see there's an in, out, and an R and L. You can see that the right side here doesn't have the cable connector, so you just know right off the bat that this is for the side without the cable. And you just slide it on. It conforms to the shape of the arm. When you put it on, it will probably help solidify this if you're leaning over, although without this, I have zero problem, but again, it will depend on head size. So it's nice you have this option. The other one, it holds the cable. So you remove this, this built-in cable holder with no extension. You put that one on, and then you have them both. But these rubber ones, they don't, they don't dig into my side once they're on, but they're still holding fine. But it, again, it's the pressure on the side for me right here that's probably holding it on as well. They both have proximity sensors right above the nose here. So when you take it off, again, it turns off the screen, put it on, it turns it back on. So they both have that. The bar on top, if you can tell, is, uh, well, it's bulkier on the Legion Go by a hair, but realistically, the only difference is that the X reels have a nose dip, which is nice. One, it makes them look more like real glasses from other angles. Two, that doesn't hit you right in the face. Now for me, this wasn't really hitting me unless I jam it right to my head and now it's hitting me. 
This could put pressure on some people's forehead area though because this bar in the middle just sits there all the time. Some people may need to adjust their glasses closer or further away for them to see the whole screen. I'll talk about that more in a moment, but for the most part, these are better. And that also has to do with the smaller lenses inside as well because that all of this smaller footprint makes everything better in, in a lot of senses, not just fitment and comfort, but being able to see through. On the glasses themselves, they have physical buttons, which is great. I am a big fan of those. The X-Reels only have the right side. I believe the new ones do too. The Legion glasses have controls on both sides, which is better. The left side, I believe, is brightness up and down, and the right side is volume. And the bump right here is cool. It helps you figure out which one is which, and it's nice to have both on the fly. The X-Reel does not have that. It is just for brightness. These turn off when you remove them. It's also a setting you can change, and then when you put them back on, they turn back on. Also, the button here, it turns them on and off, which is nice because sometimes you're with them and because you can see through these, if someone comes up to you quick and talks to you, just click that button and you can look right through and talk to them, so it's nice. You can't do that with these, at least at the moment. They may implement more functions for these, so it's nice to have more buttons, but they both have their own positives and negatives. The X-Real glasses have some hidden functions that are recent to the updates. On the brightness up button, if you hold it for three seconds, you'll hear a beep and that switches the glasses between 2D and 3D modes. And it doesn't work when you connect the beam, if you have that. If you hold the brightness button up for six seconds, you'll hear two beeps and then this puts the glasses in 120 hertz mode. But this is only available during screen mirroring, I think, and you can't really use it with nebula or beam as well. Those support 72 hertz. If you plug the glasses into something, a device that doesn't support 120 hertz, they may stay black. In that case, you'll use this hardware button to set it back to 72 or 60 hertz. Additionally, on the brightness down button, if you hold that for three seconds until you hear a beep, that will enable DP audio pass through. The smaller button opposite of the toggle is the display on off button. So if you click that once, it will turn the display on or off. If you hold that for three seconds, it converts the brightness rocker into a volume rocker but only on certain devices. This is a bug, so they're gonna fix this. They have to. I don't even know if they're aware of it, but on the Legion glasses, the volume rocker, there is no quick mute that I noted. And so when someone was talking to me, I took them off. Well, the music was still playing loudly. I thought, oops, I gotta turn these down. So I'm clicking the volume rocker and they wouldn't move. Then I thought, okay, well, I covered my finger on the sensor in front here and Yep, sure enough, it turned all the way down. So they have to sense that you have them on and or cover the proximity sensor for the volume rocker to work. Another thing with the volume rocker, it is independent of the device. So when I plugged it into my Legion Go, I turned the volume to 100% and they were super low and I thought, what? So I clicked the volume rocker and sure enough, it went up in steps. It's nice because I think it has large steps. I think five to 10 clicks somewhere in there will go from zero to 100. I like that instead of doing 100 clicks. That's really annoying. And I'm indifferent about this because the old school way when you were Bluetooth 3.0 and stuff is it was independent and it wouldn't control the device, etc. But for this, it's not bad because you can just leave your device set at 100 and then adjust the volume here to what you feel like and you don't have to go back and forth. The speakers, these are labeled as high definition, noise canceling, etc., etc. These are labeled as whatever their marketing term is, I forget. But Realistically, I have a lot of smart glasses with speakers. They are all the same. They're either really bad or decent. So the Bose ones are the go-to for me, and those sound quite decent. The Razer ones sound really close to that. These x Reels sound pretty much the same. I've read a few comments that Legion glasses have better sound. I'm going to fully disagree. So I've tried the x Reel Airs, and apparently the twos are even better. The sound on this is better, louder, fuller, and less compressed. Again, take that with a grain of salt because none of these glasses are going to have blow your mind sound. They're all gonna be basic, okay? But they're both full enough. If you go above 50 to 70% on here, it's gonna start compressing the range of the song and you can really tell. The bass cuts out, the, the highs get a little too, I don't know, unpleasant and it doesn't distort, but it's not that loud. So the X-Reels, I tried them on immediately and I kept going back and forth. At full 100% volume, they're definitely louder. You can definitely hear the bass more. It's Again, it's just a little bump. It's it's more punchy bass in these, you know, around the 100 hertz, 120 hertz range. Nothing, <laughs> not gonna hear any deep stuff. But it was nice and I thought, all right, well, this is a surprise. 
other people are going to hear what you're listening to if the volume is over 30, 40, 50%, depends what it is, but they will hear it. These aren't bone conducting or anything like that. I believe the newer models of the Unreal X Reels, they angled them inwards with another marketing term to silence out other people, but they are still going to do the same thing. You do get a little bit of space and ambiance and sort of a three-dimensional effect on something, so that's cool. In gaming, it actually works. And I played Call of Duty on this and it was viable and the sound was good. I'm sure they'll aim these more towards gamers. The X Reels have excellent microphones. The call quality is great. I've been told that it's perfectly clear. The Legion glasses do not list any microphones in the specs. They don't seem to have any on the arms that I could visibly see and I could not get any sort of microphone function to work. So they do have them. They may be hidden and they may not be activated, but my guess at this point is they do not have any. I will do a decibel test to see which one gets louder, but other than that, these are relatively the same. So about 77. One thing I wanted to talk about a little more in depth is the prescription lenses because this will affect a fair amount of people. You can see the size difference. The lenses in the X reels are smaller. The lens adapter on the N reels, the X reels, is a little more simple and it's also metal. What you do is you cut out these dummy lenses and you have them copied. They may not even have to be the exact amount for this because you're clipped in through the nose. You clip the little metal lens holder in first, and then you clip the nose piece right on top of it and the nose piece sustains it. The nose piece is really difficult to get off, so you really do need this. It's like a very thick guitar pick. You, you have to work your way on each edge until it finally loosens up enough to pull out. It's much more difficult to take off the nose piece on this than it is the Legion glasses, but it's not really something you do all the time, if at all, unless you're sharing these. The eyeglasses have a piece that clips on to the nose piece. So you, you just take the part of the nose piece that goes into the unit here, slide it under. The Legion comes with this dummy lens cutout and it's connected to this black plastic piece, which looks really cheap. Luckily, this is not what goes on your glasses. That can be confusing. This is just to hold the piece in here and show you that these edges snap in and lock in. So this black piece emulates this top bar here. And if you look on the top bar, there are little cutouts on each side. And that's where you snap the lenses. So unfortunately, these look much easier to make. I don't have glasses and I don't know how lenses are cut and if they can cut these precisely. I'm assuming they can, but these look far easier to make than this. You have to have this replicated. So it has to have these little hooks and everything. The nose piece is already on this one. The nose piece goes on after on the end reels. The nose piece goes on first on the legions. And then you put it in front and then you snap it in. It's easier to put in on the legion glasses, but it looks flimsy. Who knows? I don't know. It will be thicker glass because this will be cut, I'm sure. But I don't know how easy this is going to be to source to put that on. So if you have prescription lenses, this may be a deal breaker for you. It's easier on the X reels. I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to recall offhand, but I think the Vitour and the Rokids, one or both of those have diopter adjustments if that's something you need. Don't quote me on that. I haven't looked into those because they just don't appeal to me as much as the X-Reels do. So you can figure out between these two at least which one may fit you better. For the nose pieces, the Legion glasses are far easier to remove than the X-Reels. So I was able to test the nose pieces. I tested them on various people. I used my girlfriend because she has a very low bridge. She has to get special low bridge fitting glasses or nose pieces installed for her prescription lenses. So I thought that was a very important factor because that could affect many people as far as the glasses sliding down and you not being able to experience it or they just fall off completely. I tested them on another friend that has a wider nose. So I wanted to get a variation of nose sizes that would feel which ones would work better. So basically, I had various people try these on. Let's take the largest as an example. The X-Reel has 
longer nose pieces where the Legion glasses make this step, therefore taking some of the length away, but they have a wider range. If you squeeze the X reels together, they are more pliable. They can be bent in and out easier. These are rather stiff. Because it has that step, I don't know how much you'll be able to conform these. I don't know. They should both be perfectly adjustable for you. However, people with low bridge noses may prefer the X reels. She was able to use them both and they worked, but the, the large size, which is the longest size, was pretty wide and it the glasses did start to slide down over time. To counter that, I ended up putting on these adjustments in the back to hold them to your head tighter. That did help. So it really depends. Everyone's head's gonna be so different and the shape and where you need to add extra padding, such as in the back here on the arms or where you need to bend the nose. I think that bending these in will help. So if you really want these and you have a low bridge, you, you can bend these in quite a bit, but they still won't reach the length that the X reels will. So there is that. The mediums sort of work universally for everybody and the smalls require someone with a really small gap, probably between the, the bridge of their nose and their eyes. So at least you have multiple sizes. The smallest size on the X reels and the Legion glasses are quite a bit different actually. These have quite a bit of length still and these have a very small step. So if you have a very small space, then you may lean towards the Legion glasses because these look like they are absolutely tiny. Point being is that you can probably play with this and adjust it a bit, but if you have a low bridge, that may definitely steer you towards the X reels. It's something to keep in mind because the way the glasses sit are really going to affect how much of the screen you see. If they sit too low and you keep you can't raise them up higher to near your eyebrows, then you're not going to part of the screen is going to be cut off. These have a smaller screen, so it should be easier for you, but still it will be cut off. It will cause blurriness even more so than they have, and it will it will it will affect your whole experience. So. The nose piece is pretty important. I think that if you have a normal face dimension, I mean, what's normal, but if you have a sort of symmetrical distance between things, I think you'll probably fall in line with the mediums. They should be sufficient for most people. And if you have a very wide set nose, the larges on the legions are definitely the way to go because those have a very nice width. With all nose pieces, you can bend them out. I've actually bent these out slightly on the mediums here to allow it to sit lower. Because of the way they angle, they kind of do this really harsh bend at the end. That may not be great. You probably have to bend the end in like this and then bend the top part out, if that makes sense. So it will end up being like this instead of like this. Initially, it was sitting up here. and I look goofy. Now it's sitting down lower. The, the, more, you, the more you let your eyebrows show, the more it feels like real sunglasses and looks like that. But from the side, See, if I put this really close to my head, that's about as close as I can get. It's still comfortable and I can see, but they look more like real glasses. That's one thing you'll have to get used to when you're using these because they are not fashionable by most means. I've heard that in the second generation X reels, the fit is smaller, lighter, and closer to the face. So it's actually better for people with small bridges. Whereas the original X reel airs are for people who have a larger bridge. They may be more comfortable that way. So realistically, it will come down to what fits you best besides all the minor spec differences. Just keep that in mind when you're looking at these because this whole thing will affect the experience and the functionality. Just to show you how easy it is to put these on, I just push the slot in and pop it in. So these are already on. They're very easy to put on, both of them. In fact, the X reels are easier to put in than the Legion because these are rubberized, so they require a little more precision, but they're both... You just have to keep pressing the Legion glasses to make sure they go and finally seat themselves. But once they're both in, they're both fine. You don't need a special tool to pull out the Legion glasses. They both require a USB-C Alt-DP connection. On Lenovo's website for the Legion glasses, they do not list it as HDMI compatible and they do not have an adapter. The adapter for this should work and there are generic ones on Amazon. At this point, USB-C is the way to go and you'll need Alt-DP, just keep it at that. The Legion glasses have a micro OLED display which renders 1920 by 1080 p full HD or just 1080p for everybody, and it's good enough. The Nreal Airs also have a 1920 by 1080 display. From a perspective of looking directly in the lenses, the X reels still look larger. The Legion glasses have a 60 hertz refresh rate. The N reels have a 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, the N reels, the X reels, came out as 60 hertz as well. And they had a 
sub-function in the background, sort of a developer menu that enabled 72 hertz. And you could actually see the difference. Ran that for quite a while. Now they dropped a new model recently in the past few months, and they didn't have to do this, but they enabled 120 hertz for the original glasses. Not only is that awesome and it works really well, it was a huge trust factor, trust building factor that Xreal as a company brought to the consumer, which I think is awesome. From my point of view, that's a really strong move. So these are 120 hertz now, and these are the original number ones. These are 60 hertz. I don't know if these can handle more, and Legion Space is, or Legion Go is being worked on at the moment, so maybe they'll start upgrading these as well. I can't guarantee that, and in fact, I don't even have an intuitive answer about leaning towards one way or the other. They're both TUV certified for anyone that cares about that. So they're low flicker and low blue light. So it's healthier for your eyes. But realistically, that's a good thing. But I think all of these are going to be certified for that. It's another marketing tactic, but it's a decent one. So the contrast ratio, not that a lot of people care about that, but it's 50,000 to 1 on the Legion glasses, but it is 100,000 to 1 on the in reels. So that's quite a jump. I couldn't find any ratings on the Legion glasses as far as color and the color space. These are rated at 108% sRGB color gamut, so it's pretty decent. These are vibrant, they're sharp, and the colors look great. So the color in contrast in the Unreals are, are just better. It's not a huge difference, but I do prefer the way these look. When I initially put these on, when you don't have anything to compare it to, you think, oh, it looks pretty good. It's The color's decent, they get pretty bright. The color on the Legion glasses is slightly more washed out. The color on the X-Reels, even the first gen, is vibrant. It's got that Samsung vibrance to it. It's, it's nice, and I appreciate that. Some people want neutral colors, and that's fine. So you may think these are a little bit washed out, but the color's still perfectly fine. I, I didn't have a problem with it. I just thought I'd mention that. The color I definitely preferred on here, but they're pretty close. The brightness... So this is listed at 400 nits. The Gen 2 is 500 nits, which is impressive. These get plenty bright. I believe these are somewhere around 400 nits too, but I couldn't find the tech specs on their website. They do get bright enough. So, and the, the lenses are darker, that, that makes out for a, a decent, decent pair. So don't worry about the brightness on these. I think you'll be good to go. One thing that is different is the lenses on these are very dark. When I put on these X reels right now, I can see right through even the, the OLED housing I forget the name of it, but the housing of the, the projection lens, I can see right through it. It's crystal clear, and there's actually more space underneath it to see through as well. So I can kind of glance down and out. Worst case, if it was too bright, I could do this and still see. So there, there is that. On the Legion glasses, when I put them on, they're off right now, and I can't, I can't see the camera. I can't see much. I can look directly at a bright light, and I can see the light at a hazy sort of diminished value, but that's it. So as far as being AR, these aren't AR because if I'm wearing these, I'm going to run into walls. <laughs> so I, I physically was not able to walk around with the Legion glasses. The Unreals, I've walked around airports and lots of places with them and had them on low. Not that I do that often. It's not a great thing to walk around with these on. We're not there yet as far as technology, but it's, it's good enough. You can use these. These are all rated or measured. This has a 200 inch screen. This has a 330 inch screen. If you've never used one of these, let me tell you that humans have terrible perception of size. So when you put these on, I don't know if you're going to expect to be in the front row at a cinema. <laughs> it just, it's, it's a different experience than what you think it will be. When you put these on and you have the shade on, it's going to look like you're sitting in front of, I don't know, a, a 25 inch monitor, something like that. It's going to look small, okay? And that's just our perception. Because these are see-through, if you take the cover off and you look at a blank wall or something, it's going to project, especially the further away you are, as a bigger as a bigger screen. It's going to look 100 plus inches. If you sit far enough back, it could look up to 200 inches. It, it really depends. But typically in a, in a normal room, in a home, you probably have the screen look about 120 inches. So keep that in mind. With these, you don't get that. Not only is the screen a tiny bit smaller, but negligible. You can't see through these unless you're looking in direct light. These are not going to give you that effect of a bigger screen, but it's the same size screen and people are going to think one way or the other, regardless of what I say. It's kind of fun to sit back and look at the wall and think, all right, well, I'm watching a movie like I'm in a movie theater. 
as opposed to a tiny screen in front of you. It depends on the distance from the glasses to your eyes and the distance between your background, etc. But with these being so dark, it's really difficult to get that effect. The X Reels have a dedicated app, Nebula, and it worked right off the bat. I've had Samsung phones my whole run with this. I've had a Fold and the S line, but it is hit or miss. Every time they update it, it doesn't work for a month. So, but beyond that, it's also gimmicky. It's cool for some people, it's cool for kids. They're trying, they continuously throw stuff in it and the settings are in there. So you do need it sometimes if you don't wanna go the hardware route. This at the moment doesn't have an app. However, when you plug it into the Legion Go, it has its own dedicated thing in Legion Space. How many people are gonna have a Legion Go and these glasses? I don't know, probably not much. So that's not a huge thing right now. The end reels here, they have a stationary screen. You can't adjust it, but because these have software, you can adjust things in the Nebula app. So in the app, it's kind of gimmicky, but it's really cool because it tracks your head. You can look around and I can see a volume rocker over here. In the middle, I can see a screen with some games or their thing. I can see the app store here. I turn right, I can see YouTube, right? Everything in there is adjustable. You can adjust the screen size. Your phone turns into a laser. It's pretty cool. So your laser right on the screen and it's dead accurate. You can just pick anything. In fact, there's even games you can play with the little laser gun. It's it's kind of cool. It's a little gimmicky, but it's cool that you have that. Legion glasses don't have anything like that yet. Everything else with the X reels cannot be adjusted. It's a it's a fixed screen. But if you use the beam, which is a new accessory that has come out in the past few months, which we waited over a year for here in the US, that allows you to take, I think, a lot of apps or almost any app and adjust it to whatever you want. That thing is really cool. I don't have one yet. And it's because I don't use these as much as I thought I would and I have a whole bunch of stuff. But I am going to pick one of those beams up at some point. I believe they're still working on Windows implementation to make this work with multiple screens for work productivity. Again, uh, uh, that's hit or miss because of the text is not completely sharp, but it's sharp enough to use for sure. So this one is being worked on. I don't know if there's anything in the future for this or a separate app to integrate multiple screens. At the moment, this is just a screen that projects the movie you're watching or something or the game, and it will possibly stay that way. If they do optimize the Windows version of Nebula, I will be using that all the time or at least trying it. So that's interesting. And again, with DeX, these both work. So if you have DeX, you can still use this as a desktop and then inside of that desktop, you can potentially use multiple <laughs> things, but other than that, or Windows, but you won't be able to get the true multiple monitor feature as the AR space would let you do. Let me talk about the pros and cons. I'm going to start with the X Reels, the N Reel Airs, the X Reel Air ones. I'm going to start with the pros, the positives. You get this shade with the kit and it turns the glasses into something that look real to something that looks funny, but it comes in handy. Now, I, I've worn these at airports in bright daylight, and I've been able to see through just fine and watch full movies staring out the window at an airplane in the bright sun. That's how bright these are. So both of these perform fine in light. It's really when you come down to really dark games like Diablo or something, and in the daylight, you'll suffer on some of the darker blacks that all kind of mesh together. That's when you snap these on. Now it's completely opaque and I can't see anything. But from the front, I look goofy. <laughs> so I don't look as, as normal, which is still not a big deal, but these are still passable even like this. The other is the detachable cable. I am a huge fan of this detachable cable. The fact that I have this on there is, it bothers me. Not a, not a deal breaker, but it bothers me. The other thing about this detachable cable is that it has a 45 degree angle. So you can only plug it in one side on this and it sort of turns into the curvature of the arm. So it's, it's really nice and it flows. The cable on this feels thicker. Uh, actually, they're both pretty thick, but the Legion glasses cable feels a bit thicker. They're both strong. So these cable lengths are nearly identical. And I would say they're about, I don't know, three and a half feet, four feet, maybe four feet. Four feet, the important part about this is that you can put them on and they reach down with a little bit of room for play and fit into your pocket. That's the important part. Both of these do that. So your device will be in your pocket or your backpack and you'll have room to spare. Either way, it's really nice to have that. It is one more step to put them on. So if you're stationary, maybe you'll prefer that one wire connected instead of connecting this every time. It is one more step that could slow you down. But other than that, I really appreciate that. For the color, this has one color, it's listed as gray. This has one color, I think it's listed as black or gray as well. They look relatively the same on front. 
This is black, this is gunmetal. This also offers a red or orange. It looks orange to me, but I think it's labeled as red. Either way, it looks cool. Black sort of works with everything and everybody, but a lot of people look really good in white sunglasses. So I don't, but again, skin tones that contrast, they look way cooler with colored sunglasses. So I really appreciate that these have red or orange secondary models. That's cool. For productivity, these still aren't great because of the text. It's not blurry, but it's pixelated a bit. You can notice it. You can read it though. It will work for productivity in certain senses, but the X reels will be far better than these Legion glasses. Between the two, the X reels are better for reading, writing, and general text. They're not great because both of these are 1920 by 1080p, and it's, well, that is fine on a mobile phone it does not look good on bigger things. So let me give you a reference. Let's say you have a 32 inch TV that is full HD 1080p. If back in the day that was fine and we didn't pay attention and we sit a certain distance away. Now, if we sit up close to that, we see how grainy it is and how terrible it looks, right? Even my 17 inch laptop, which is a full HD screen, looks like crap. I just don't like it anymore. So I'm so used to 4K and even tiny devices at that, that it's just not, it's not there. This is much like VR in the sense that it sounds like it has a lot of resolution, but when you put it on, it's different because it has to fill a lot of space. Now VR has to fill a lot more space. So even 4K per eye on that still makes it get the screen door effect where you can see the pixels and they're getting better, but this has a minor screen door effect. So when you put these on, don't expect it to look like your 4K TV at home, but it will be very close, especially in the dead center. Personally, I think this is somewhere around looking at a 20 inch monitor that's 1080p. That's, that's how I feel the resolution on this looks in comparison. So it's a bit of a long shot, but it's there. A little tangent is that I was carrying these around with a phone and a tiny little mouse and I was using these on an airplane. Before I had the Legion Go, I had the travel keyboard and mouse and I was using these to type and do, do some work on the airplane. It wasn't ideal again because it's not the sharpest, but it was cool to do that. So these are, these are great for a really portable sort of reason and using them with a phone. When you're toting all this stuff around already, you're just adding to it. So there's a there's a divide there when you realize, okay, I need to be more efficient. <laughs> One thing about Xreal as a company is that their sole purpose of existence, at least at this point in time, is the AR or glasses. They actually started with AR glasses, true AR glasses, so that with cameras and whatnot, interaction with the three-dimensional space in front of you. So they know what they're doing, that is their dedicated business core value and they are focused on that. So that's a good thing. Legion or Lenovo is a great brand. It's much bigger, it's much more prominent and it will have better support. However, they're not about this. They do have some expensive AR glasses and they have a department for this. So it's not unheard of that they already know what they're doing with this, but I don't think they're gonna support this as much as Xreal would support this. So. That's something I'm indifferent about, but the support behind this may be stronger and they'll possibly continue to develop this faster than Lenovo would these. Some of the cons of the Xreal Airs. So as with all of these types of glasses, a lot of people will complain about edge blurring and corner blurring. So before I jump into these, let me tell you that for a lot of people, not all people, you will get minor corner blurring. So the corners, all right, not the full edge, not all the way around, but the corners with these. For me, I have 20-20 vision and you put these on and you think, all right, well, that sh I should be able to see everything perfectly clear. And I do, but part of the reason that the edges or corners may be blurry for me is I have a slight astigmatism in one eye. Another thing that I've noticed over the years, it, it's really close to being off the screen. Now, I'll talk about this in a moment when I talk about these lenses here, but just know that the Blurry corners are possibly an issue, but it doesn't do much. And unless the menu text is right there in the corner, these will be fine. It took me so many months to finally get something that would allow me to charge my phone while using the device, because these will kill a fully charged phone in under five hours. So, and that's something like an S-Line phone, an S23 Ultra or something with a huge battery that has great sustainability. Initially, I was using a wireless power bank that was wirelessly charging my device while I was using these. I can't sustain having these on my head for five hours anyhow. It's a, it's a long shot, but for some people they can. So eventually I found an adapter for an old AR glasses system that's I think eight years old and got it off eBay for 30 bucks and that allowed me to charge it and let these work. It has to do with the DP out being so specific on the alt DP function and the way it's wired for the charge going back in. Because 
These glasses have no battery, they don't hold charge, and they work primarily off the device you're using. Eventually, Xreal as a company put out things, but it took them a good long while, we're talking a year, before they put out an adapter for HDMI, an adapter for the iPhone. That was a couple of months, and the Beam. So I don't know how, the timelines are a little different, but it took them quite a while. So that was a negative of these. Now there's a lot of things to support this, but you still have to buy accessories. Either way, these aren't gonna work with everything, so that is also a con. The, initially, these were only working with five Samsung devices and I think one iPhone, so something crazy like that. Luckily, I had Samsung and Dex and was using that. It worked with my laptop because that had all DP. The other thing with the X Reels is that they are $399 for the base model and the Pros would be $449, so a $50 difference. And the Legion glasses will be $329 and they'll probably go on sale. I don't, I, I've actually never seen a sale on X Reels. I'm sure it's happened, but I don't know. Legion glasses will probably go on sale, especially because I think they're doing poorly at the moment. So $329 is definitely more affordable. The last con with both of these again is just going to be the pressure for different people and the longevity on the amount you can wear them. So I can wear these for maybe a max of four to five hours. These haven't softened up maybe a little bit. It's hard to gauge that, but I've gotten used to them a bit, but that will be a downfall of these. You can't wear them all day. Some people can. Some people can wear earbuds all day long and very few earbuds can I have in my ear without causing pain after a while, and even changing the tips to the super fancy ones, et cetera. So some people are just really averse to this or some stuff just fits them like a glove. So that's a subjective one, but for most of us, it won't be all day. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the negative aspects that may impact your time with the Legion glasses if you happen to pick them up. Namely, the blurry edges. You have to have heard about this. I was expecting a slight blur in the corners, such as the X Reels offer, but it is significantly worse. I will say that. So with the blurry edges also comes the sort of, I, the only way to explain it is a bulge. So if you have a straight line, let's say that I have the glasses on and you can see the top of the window screen because you will see the edges. So the edge is a straight line. Well, it creates these bulges in areas. So it's it deforms the straight line and it bulges up. And it, it's, it bothers me. The only thing I found that reduces that is pushing them as close as you can to your face. And I believe it has to do with the extremely thick lens reflective housings. The N-Reels have much thinner sort of angled and much more refined housing for the, the OLED to project onto. And these are just humongous. And another negative of that is that when you look through these, it looks like you're looking through binoculars. Some cheaper binoculars, you see the ring in the housing when you're looking through binoculars. Most of them should just combine into one solid image and you think, oh, that's good. Some of them, you see the actual rings as you're looking through the scope. That's what these are. You can see the bottom edges of this when you look through. And it's not a matter of adjusting the nose piece for me or whatnot, it just does it. So that is the bad part. Therefore, a lot of people who have specific types of faces will function well with these. But I think it's a far smaller margin of people that will be able to fit these comfortably and have them work as opposed to the X-Reels because of that right there. The blurry edges also, they, they create this sort of smeared glow. That's a good word for it, it smears. So the way to look at this, if you're looking at a rectangle on the screen, you gotta basically put an oval in there instead. And so the corners, they, they would sit outside of the oval but the edges of the rectangle touch the edge of the oval. So that corner right there, that big gap right here, it, it really blurs, it's really bad, and it smears across. Text is illegible, okay? And this is, this is with both of my eyes on both sides. I find it worse on my left side for some reason, but that could just be the fitment. I've shifted the glasses around, I've tried pushing them forward and back. There's no way to get around it because of the thickness of the lens. The lens, again, creates that telescopic sort of looking through a, uh, binoculars, bad binoculars that you can see. It's not a deal breaker because it's, it's so minimal, but it doesn't fully immerse you like the X-Reels do. Reading text on the edges in outside of the oval is difficult. If you make a cross, everything on that cross is legible for the most part. So if you have text all the way to the right here, it's legible. That blurry effect on the oval, the edges, the smear, it's, it's kind of like 
opening your eyes underwater, you can't really see, but it's just sort of smeared. That's that's what it's like looking at the edges. It's this glow that pushes upwards and just smears the <laughs> text across. That was only on the desktop and trying to read different text and read documents. In games, it wasn't as bad. I don't know how to explain it, but the text options in the menu, granted they weren't in those corners too much, they were, I was able to decipher what they were. The other largest issue besides the blurry edges is the ability to see through. I've already said this, but the fact that you can see nothing through these, nothing, even I have to do this, and the only way I could see is through here. They're not true glasses, it's, it's like VR with out the VR features. So it just, that's the only thing that bothers me. You can't see through. These are physical glasses that I could wear around. They're not perfectly see-through, but they're definitely usable. Even in a darker room, this is perfectly fine. I can see things for the most part clearly. I guess the darker it is, you don't require the shade and you can get brighter viewing. So that's great if you're gonna stay stationary and never want to see through them, but if not, then it's definitely a con. <laughs> so I guess it can go either way. Another thing is there is a bit of chromatic aberration. It's sort of this RGB glow, and it happens around edges, but it also happens around icons randomly on the screen. It doesn't bother me too much, but you can definitely see it. If you've played some video games and you've turned that function on and off, you know what I'm talking about, maybe Resident Evil or <laughs> Dying Light, things like that. They have a lot of that built in. That doesn't bother me nearly as bad as the blurry edges. After a week of use, one funny thing I found with these is the initial thought was the pressure here on the side was gonna really bother me. The pressure didn't bother me, even the rubbing in the back here, didn't bother me, that was crazy. What has bothered me is the thickness of the arm slightly pushing my ears out. My ears, I guess, are too close to my head. It's not bad, don't get me wrong, but it started to fatigue my ear. You just feel this sharp pain and I was thinking, what the hell? But yeah, it was just just the square part because it's square instead of rounded and it's kind of sharp. It's actually, it's actually really sharp. <laughs> now, now that I touch it, this is a really sharp edge here. Looks cool, but it starts to get on your ear and bother it. So that was the only thing I felt. It, it was the same as these. I was able to wear them for plenty of time. So that really surprised me. So if your head can fit in here, I, these are for skinny heads, but if your head can fit in here, the pressure right here did not bother me. And the arm is straight up pushing into my head. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting revelation to figure out to get your ears to rest actually in the rubber parts here. I think it'll be ideal. So people who have longer heads this direction, you may get by and be a lot more comfortable than me. So if the rubber parts of the angle here rest on your ears, you'll be good to go. If not, if this harder part does, that's a con. So not a deal breaker because I don't think people wear these for that many hours on end, but it did start to fatigue after a while. Some people I noticed complained about the bar in the middle. I did mention that, and I guess that could be a con. It really depends on your face shape. But if this bar in the middle happens to rest on your face, right here constantly, that will be an issue. And lastly, the fit. I still think this is not made for people with wider heads. It's made for people with elongated heads and sort of thinner shaped heads. I've already said that the attached cable is a problem for me. That may not be a problem for some, but I'm really not a fan of that. As of now, because there's no app for this, there's no real three-dimensional interface to get even some sort of emulation of AR features. At least in Nebula with this, you get that sort of, that that feeling. So when you turn, the screen stays here and you turn, you can see multiple screens, you can do multiple things. Let's talk about the positives of the Legion glasses. First and foremost, and probably the number one reason people would get these over anything else is the look. A lot of people will like the look of these. These are definitely glasses that could look good on certain people. I don't think I'm one of them, but they're not bad at all. These are certainly, these are the second best looking glasses that project anything that I've ever seen. So the first would be these. And these are very reminiscent of the Ray-Ban Wayfarers. Men and women can wear the Wayfarers and both look equally decent in them. These could work for multiple people, but these also, these also look like gaming glasses. They look more like some sort of very modernized VR headset. A lot of you may find the pitfalls of this and think, I still don't care because I want the look of that. And that's that's fine because aesthetics do matter. And when you're gonna wear this in public and you're gonna use it around, it's important for you to feel comfortable in them, so. But for the most part, they both look good. 
Another benefit is these integrate into the Legion Go and into Legion Space. They have their own little tab. It's nice and smooth. This is a Windows device, so it's not completely universal yet or sort of one tracked, but I believe they'll keep upgrading this, especially because they're still working on Legion Space itself. Many of you who watch this may not have a Go at all, but I have hope that these will probably be improved as far as what you can change in there. Right now, it's only the volume and the brightness. So it's not perfect, but it's cool that they have that option in there. So it's a pretty smooth connection. You plug it in and it just goes. The arms, I've already stated this, are longer than the X-Reels and they are more adept to fitting around people with elongated heads in that direction. Another positive of these is the hinges that bend outwards. I certainly think that we need these to get these on, but this is a really precise, you know that it's expanded and you know that it stops there. I like that as opposed to the X-Reels where you're kind of thinking, okay, can it go further? Am I about to snap this? So I like that these are so solid feeling. The screen is smaller on the Legion glasses. The screen is a tad bit bigger on the X-Reel Airs. Leading off of that, one of the pros of the Legion glasses is the sharpness of the definition right in the center of the screen. So if you take a circle, I know I said oval earlier, but if you just take a circle and put it right in the middle of the rectangle, that section there is sharp. The desktop, text, everything is just sharp. There's no screen door effect that I can visibly see. It looks beyond 1080p. And that's because the pixel densities squish together and makes it much better to look at. One last quick recap on the Xreal Airs 1, which these are the Nreals, the originals, and the Xreal Air 2s and the Xreal Air 2 Pros. So I'm going to be perfectly honest in saying that I would never upgrade to the Air 2s from these. They are essentially the same thing. I would pay the excess money if there was a sale or something to get the Air 2 Pros for one distinct feature. They have electrical dimming features in the lenses on the outside. So here where it's one uniformed sort of see-through pattern, which I can see, it's, it's like a fairly medium tinted sunglass lens. You can control the darkness and lightness with, the, with an electrical pulse from the unit you're using on the Pro 2s, which is awesome. So in cars that have sunroofs that do this, it's really cool. For the most part, that'd be the reason I'd get the Air 2 Pros. If you're trying to save money, you can probably pick up the X-Real Air 1s in a lot of aftermarket places and they're a safe bet. I am perfectly confident that these will last a long time and they're still supported quite well. All three of those glasses have 46 degrees field of view. All three of them have dual microphones and dual speakers. The new ones have a marketing term where they angle the speakers in slightly, I, I believe to sort of isolate the noise more. I can't speak if that works or if it's just a tactic, I don't know. I would assume to a degree it works. The Air 2s and the Air 2 Pros have soft temple and soft ear pieces or some sort of technology they've integrated to make them softer. I haven't tried that, but I'd also be excited to try that if it is significantly different because over time, these do fatigue a little bit once the pressure is consistent in that area. So that would be a nice feature. All three have the 120 hertz screens and they did bring that to the first version of the X Reels, which they didn't have to do. So that's an awesome feature. The second generation has 500 nits for the screen brightness. This has 400 nits. These are really bright. Okay, so you won't have an issue, especially with the cover or the electrochromic control of the opaqueness. Brighter is always better. So it's been said that the Air 2s and Air 2 Pros have a slightly smaller screen to get that higher density, which makes things look sharper. So in that case, they probably do look better. And if you haven't had the ones, you won't even notice the difference. So other than that, really, there's just a couple of things to make you upgrade. I would, I would certainly consider upgrading from the ones to the two Pros. I would never consider upgrading from the ones to the twos. I just would not. Unless you have some diehard issue with the comfort that maybe the twos alleviate. That was a really brief breakdown of the end reels, which I may do a full review in the future. We'll see. But for now, just know that all of them are really good options. After all of that, my future hope is that I'm holding out for a pair of these that does 1440p. I think that is going to be the bare minimum to avoid that screen door effect. And that's going to cost a pretty penny and they're going to probably need different sort of OLED technology. That's going to be a ways out there, but that, that should be coming. In fact, the next ones that I'm really interested in, I think TCL is making those. I know it was a concept, but I think they're going to be the closest to push it to market where we actually have completely see-through lenses with a heads-up display. I don't even care if it's in color, but if we can see messages or reply to things with a little heads-up display, that would be ideal. That's it for my future hopes, because right now these are as good as they get, right? <laughs>
Even when I struggled to play first person shooting games competitively on the Legion Go because of the screen size and because of the possible joysticks, when I use a, a separate remote with these glasses on, I am competitive in games like Call of Duty and whatnot. So I can I can stay in the game and be on top 90% of the time, even with these glasses. It's not as sharp as a 4K screen or whatnot, but 120 hertz on this, the low response time, and even the audio isn't delayed or anything. So it's pretty good gaming device. These are roughly the same, except the corners. The icons below, they are smeared and they're sort of going towards the bottom left corner. The screen is smaller and I think I think it's helping. I'm, I'm not sure if it's slightly smaller than normal. So for instance, the points up in the top right, I can make them out that it's 358, but it's really hard to see that eight. And the panel readout of all the performance monitors, I know that it says CPU GPU up there, but that one's really hard to read as well. But if I wasn't trying to read text in the corners, then I think it would be viable. So right in the center, it is so sharp. I can't even see a single pixel. I can't pick one out. It's very smooth. Everything looks good. So where it says right hand and left hand, everything looks really good there. I can see all the stats. So right here, I can see the stats where it says health down the left weapon, but the numbers that's where it starts to break off. So the 435 on the top right and the 400 on the bottom right, that's where it becomes starts to become blurry. And right now, everything looks clear on that menu right there with the stats, but the numbers, all, all the numbers down that row have chromatic aberration. Very minimal and it's not really affecting much, but I can see the, I can see the red, green, blue effect glowing over them. The text on top right here, I can see everything perfectly clearly. It starts to get a little hazy near the RB and LB icon, but I can still read it. And then again, when I go to the left up there to the monitors where I can't see. Now on the bottom there where it says navigate, I can see navigate perfectly. Remove is where it starts to get pretty hazy. Select is even worse. And then back is super hazy. So back is completely smeared down. I can see, I can tell that it says back. So I'd say the worst of it is that bottom left icon right there, whatever that is. That is the part that I am having trouble seeing. But for gameplay, this is rather smooth and the 60 Hertz is good. Everything looks good. The color could be a little bit better, a little more vibrant, but this is game isn't one that makes the colors pop anyhow. Also, you could probably adjust that with other things. I would show more popular games, but the Steam seems to struggle with the OBS running and pushing it out to the glasses. I can probably optimize the settings. I haven't played with these glasses a lot with the Legion Go. I, I was using them on a laptop, but, well, I was using them on both, but I, I've not done OBS with this at the same time. So realistically, everything's good though. Perfectly playable. The games, when I turned OBS off, so I was doing the same games, Elden Ring and whatnot, everything was good. So I just wanted to show that and sort of describe a menu that worked out so you could see the variables and what I'm seeing and try to describe it to you so you have an idea of what's difficult to see. So hopefully that gives you an idea. A couple of tips, do not touch the inner lens housings here with your fingers. Do your best to never touch them. If you do, make sure you use the correct cloth to clean them off because once those are scratched, it's kind of game over. It's just gonna constantly be in your eye and bother you. So do your best to take care of those, especially these thick ones in here because they're massive and they look like they could scratch. <laughs> If you have a Samsung phone that supports DeX, be sure to use that. That is awesome with these. In fact, that's the best thing to use with these, I feel. Aside from Windows, if you're going for full portability, that is the best way. If you have a small Windows device like this that's powerful enough, that's also great. So either one is a really good thing. If you do move your head while playing, you will experience some sort of vertigo if you're playing fast, reflex, intense games such as Call of Duty. So when you're playing with these, you'll want to keep your head relatively stationary. Just keep that in mind. When you move a little bit and you're turning really fast in the game, you'll notice a little feeling and you're thinking, hmm, it's almost like getting that sickness feeling when you're playing VR, but not to the same degree. As a trick I did with this, I was playing these with an emulator and the emulator, typically when you put it full screen, it adjusts to the same size as Windows, the entire desktop. It didn't do that on this. And what I noticed is that, wow, no blurry edges. It's not correct in saying this, but it cut off about an inch and a half of my screen in my perception from what I could tell, you know, it's gonna be different for people, but 
It cut off about an inch, inch and a half all the way around. No blurry edges. Still looked plenty large enough, very clear because of the density. And I thought, hmm, that's a great fix. So if you have these, if you really want these, and these are the ones for you, just make the screen slightly smaller and it really cuts out that blurry corner effect and it kind of put me right in the game. I was fully immersed and the games are sharp. I was playing, granted, an older game, but it upscales to 1080p. It was really cool to get that. So I tried other games and I thought, all right, well, that's a fix right there. So if you're playing RPG games or something that have lots of menus and text, scale it down a little bit and you'll probably be fine using these. So that was one thing I learned. I thought, hmm, all right, I'm definitely gonna reassess my thoughts on these. <laughs> my final thoughts. So this has really grown on me and it has become more of an item that I can advocate for for certain things. I like that you can lean your head back while doing things. Our society nowadays is always looking at phones. People walk around in zombie mode, always looking at phones. So their heads are always down, their necks are always down. Some people think we're gonna develop humps. Well, I tend to try to stay off my phone as much as possible, but you, you, we really don't focus on posture and posture and correcting our head and trying to keep it back and you know staying off our phone or stop leaning down all day. So the point is, is that even watching TV or computer screens, we're not always sitting properly in a chair. We're usually slouching back and doing things and whatnot. So with these, it's really cool that you can just put these on and lay back in a chair. So for instance, I was playing Call of Duty where sometimes if you're playing Call of Duty and you're just staring at the screen, and you're really intense, you're still leaning and got this terrible posture and whatnot. Once you get used to it, you can kind of adapt. I just put my head back on a pillow and just looked up. So I mean, you just sit here and rest and then you're playing. Comfort is a big one and it will, if you stop staring at your phone all day or even if you just connect your phone to one of these for a few hours a day, that long amount of time that you're sitting like this can now be sitting like this or in a chair that's got proper support with neck support, something like that. It may sound nuts to a lot of people because a lot of people may not focus on this, but the people who care about health and whatnot, they may appreciate that factor. I really like that about these, so. Something to be aware of. Both of these are nearly passable for sunglasses. Don't get me wrong, I truly love VR and all the technology around it. I just haven't invested as much time because it's just something I don't wanna put this giant thing on my head. I had the PlayStation VRs and whatnot and I, I bought all this stuff and I never really used it because it does get tiresome. But I really like that these are almost like normal sunglasses. From the side, sure, they don't look as good, but they're very close. These are the best on the market for the public that look like this. So both of these are great options for that. As far as gaming goes, these are both good enough. In fact, the X-Reels are really great, surprisingly. They have adapted to become some really powerful portable monitors <laughs> for gaming. But these are both really ideal for consuming content such as YouTube or Netflix, etc. That is where they shine because realistically, no one's paying attention to the blurry edges on a movie. You really don't notice it. And dead centers where you put your focus and they're both really sharp. And even you get that screen door effect a little bit. When you're watching movies, they all look really good. So your movie experience will not be hindered by either one of these glasses or probably any of these in the same category. It's These are really ideal for that. For some people, this sort of technology here is just not gonna fly. They're not gonna be able to get their corrective lenses to seat in there correctly. They're not going to be able to see because of the nose piece won't fit right. The, they may just be uncomfortable. They'll have to wait for theirs to come. And at least there are other models coming. There's a handful in the market right now in this range, but ideally Xreal is, is owning the game right now. So these are at least uh, an option to compete with it and drive these to improve. And also these will drive these to improve. So it's, it's a win-win. So I wanna differentiate who these are for. The Legion glasses, they're more affordable and they're aimed at gamers, I'm assuming. Legion Go, Legion Glasses. They are perfectly viable for watching movies, watching TV, and gaming. As long as you're not gaming and stuff that are overly text-based, especially in the edges of the screen, unless you want to shrink the screen to try to bypass that, then you should be good gaming on these. Once you turn on a game or once you turn on a movie, it's really hard to find the blurry edges, even though they are so prominent when you're on the desktop and reading text and whatnot just outright. They're really sharp in the middle. They're so sharp that they beat these out in the middle. Really impressed by that. But the blurry edges, that's a trade-off. Also the fitment and everything else has to fall in line for you. But for the most part, I think these are really close as far as 
fitment and comfort for many people. Granted, these will require smaller heads most likely, and these will fit probably a broader range of people. The X reels or the N reel airs, the ones, these have a sharper, clearer view all around. You might have the slightest blur in the corner, but it really won't affect anything. You can read text throughout the entire screen. The screen is slightly bigger. You will have a little bit of screen door effect where you can see the pixels individually when you're reading text, depending on how large it is. But if you're on the desktop and you have the file explorer open, you will see the, the pixels in the text. It is fully legible though, where this one is not. You can see text in the corners, you can see text in games. So these are all around better. The center of this one though is sharper. They may get a tad brighter, but it's really close. The color's a little better. And again, the x real Airs will perform everything the Legion glasses will. They're better for productivity. They may have multiple monitor functionality very soon, and you can read text clearer. Ultimately, everything is going to come down to if they fit you. That's going to be the core of the functionality. If they don't fit you, then it's not for you. So you'll have to try another pair regardless of whatever specs they have over the other version. In conclusion, I would still choose the X Reels over the Legion glasses. I'm glad I got to test them out and they weren't anything that was super amazing with the Legion Go. The X Reels worked the same and have a little bit more benefits as far as software and support. I can't speak for the future, but I think both are a safe choice regardless. Speakers and all the other stuff is really close. Sure, this has an edge on it in most of those areas, but it's so minimal. And if you'd never had either pair to compare, you won't really notice it when you put these on because none of these are going to be 4K OLEDs, right? Initially putting these on and seeing the blurry edges and thinking there's no way I'm advocating for this, they have definitely grown on me. And after some adjustment and some trial and error with different media and whatnot, these will work. I, I can get behind these. They're not perfect. They're not even that awesome, but the, they, they work for what they are. If you can get these on sale, go for that. So I would, I would, if I had to make a price for these, I would say these are in the $200 range. That's what they're worth. Maybe 150, you can get them somewhere cheap at the 320. No, I don't think you should do it unless you have money to spare. These being, I think 399 when I got them, you can probably get the first version now for even cheaper. The Air 2s are 399. I think those are probably worth 300, 350. So that's a, it's a more fair price. Again, these fit me better, but these may fit you perfectly and these may not fit you at all. So you really have to test it out. Unfortunately, these aren't in store for most people to try on, but hopefully you can order them and return them within the period. With all the details you now have, hopefully you can make a better informed decision and pick one that is right for you. That is a wrap on this elaborate review that turned into a full-blown comparison. I hope that gave you some perspective and some ideas before you jump into any purchase. So remember that fitment and functionality should be the key. So buy something somewhere that has a good return policy so you can try them before you buy them. <laughs> on that note, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.